we're going to look at in this video is uh, how to balance redox equations. Uh, earlier in the unit, we met this reaction where a single displacement took place between iron and copper sulfate. That uh, is going to give us FeSO4 and Cu. Um, probably a better way of expressing this would be to show the actual ions, which means iron reacting with the copper 2 plus ion, giving Fe2 plus and Cu. The sulfate ion there is a spectator. It doesn't actually change and therefore we don't include it. So this is a better way of showing the displacement rather than include the spectator. That could have been copper chloride, copper nitrate, copper anything. It's the copper ion that's actually doing something. Now we then turn that into two half equations. Fe became Fe2 plus and given up two electrons and copper 2 plus gained the two electrons to become copper. It's very likely that you will be asked to put together half equations to make an overall equation like this. This is a pretty simple one, but some of them can be a little bit more complicated. Just remember that on page 10 of the data book, and if you haven't yet got the data book, go and get it from the website, please. Get it so you've got it always at your sort of side anytime you need it. In, on page 10 in the data book is a list of quite a few half reactions. It's a table of standard reduction potentials or standard electro potentials. They're all written as reductions. So if you want an oxidation, you simply turn them around, but they are giving you an awful lot of half equations. So if I was basically asked to uh, combine together any two half reactions, I would simply go to that page find the two, two equations in question, reverse the oxidation one and add them together. So in that chart, in fact, you will see these two reactions. You'll see iron written like this, Fe2 plus, plus 2E minus, giving Fe. Further down, you will see copper 2 plus, plus 2E minus, giving Cu. And in order to get these two to that, you simply reverse this one. Keep that one going the same way. Both of them involve two electrons. So this gives up two electrons, that receives two electrons. The, the electrons cancel, you add them together, and you get that overall equation. Now, in the external exam last year, the first external exam, they asked a question I can remember the question, which gave you an overall reaction. I'll show you the question because it is important to understand how you might kind of be asked questions in the exam on this. The reaction they gave was between copper and nitric acid. Now, when these two react, this is the balanced equation for the reaction. Cu, NO3 twice plus, um, let's get rid of that, plus 2NO2, plus 2H2O. Okay, so that's the overall equation. It's balanced, copper each side, one on each side, four hydrogens, uh, there's the four hydrogens, uh, four nitrogens, two there and two there, and then 12 oxygens, six there, plus four is 10, plus two is 12. Now, the copper half equation we already know would be copper to copper 2 plus and 2 E minus. The question asked for the other half equation. Now, that involves the nitrate ion from here, NO3 minus, let's write that down, becoming NO2. Now, that equation is not in the list that they, that they give you in the data book. And the question asked if you could now formulate that equation. So they gave you the oxidation equation and they wanted the reduction equation. If you're asked to do a question like that, identify 
the oxidizing agent and what it's being reduced to. So you can see, <clears throat> if you remember our oxidation numbers, hydrogen is plus one, oxygen is minus two, three minus twos make minus six. That would then make the nitrogen into a plus five. It doesn't change there, but it changes here to a plus four. So plus five becomes plus four. There's your oxidizer, there's what it gets reduced to. To create the balance half equation here involves a little bit of kind of know-how, if you like. Hopefully you can see that with one nitrogen on each side and three oxygens on the left and two on the right, it's going to be impossible to balance these without adding something else. If ever you come across anything like that, whichever side is short of oxygen, which is this one, add oxygen in the form of water. By adding water, we've now included another element, hydrogen. So we now have to put hydrogen on this side. Again, this is the way you put it. It always goes in as H plus ions. So we've now got all of the possible elements that we need. What we need to do now is balance the atoms on each side. Starting with nitrogen, there's one there and one there. Three oxygens on this side, two there and one there. So there's three oxygens on that side. One hydrogen on the left, two on the right. So we need to balance the hydrogens like so. Once you've balanced the atoms, what we now have to do is balance the charges. And that means checking the charge on this side. There's a one minus there. There's two pluses there. So there's one plus on this side and there's no charge on that side. So we've got to get rid of the plus on this side, which we do by simply adding an electron. So that's the half equation for the reduction reaction. Now, if you were putting these two together, what you'd need to do is cancel the electrons so that obviously any electrons lost by one are gained by the other. You can't have electrons left over. You've got to balance them so they cancel completely. So if I put these two equations together, I'm going to have to double the entire second equation. What that will give us then when I put them together is Cu plus 2NO3 minus plus 4H plus. The, the two electrons will cancel with those two electrons. We've got Cu2 plus. We've got NO2, but remember there will be 2NO2 don't forget to double it, 2NO2, and finally 2H2O. Now what we've just drawn is the ionic equation version of this equation here. Now they may not look exactly the same, but if you think about it, there's a copper there and a copper there. There's two NO2s, there's two H2Os. There's a copper two plus there and a copper two plus there. Now what we would have to do in order to go from this to that is add another two nitrates. So instead of two nitrates there, I'm gonna put four. And those four with those 4H plus becomes 4HNO3. The two nitrates on the other side turn this into that. And that is how you create that equation. So if you are asked to write Equations for reactions, your first part protocol is the data book, page 10. If the equation isn't there, then you're going to have to draw it out like I've just shown you there. It's almost, well, it's unheard of for them to give you two equations that you have to work out for yourself. So you can pretty much guarantee one will be there, but you may have to do the other one yourself.